underwater crop circles, resembling seven-foot diameter patterns on the ocean floor, were initially discovered off the coast of Japan in 1995. For years, their origin remained a mystery until 2011, when it was observed that male pufferfish were responsible for creating these intricate circles as a way to attract females. When the circles are finished, females come to inspect them. If they like what they see, they reproduce with the males. But nobody knows exactly what the females are looking for in these circles, or what traits they find desirable. Pufferfish mating involves females laying eggs in the fine sediments in the centre of the circles, and then the males fertilising them externally. Then the females vanish, and the males stay for another six days, perhaps to guard the eggs, the study noted. Underwater rivers. Imagine underwater rivers like where the cool, lighter water from the top meets the salty, heavy water underneath. They don't mix completely. Instead, they kind of hang out in layers. It's like a secret river party beneath the ocean. These underwater river spots aren't just cool to look at, they also impact ocean life. The way these layers happen affects where nutrients go, which is a big deal for the fish and other sea creatures nearby. And guess what? The underwater river spots become their own little communities, with special sea creatures that love the mix of fresh and salty water. It's like the ocean's own hidden hangout. Meeting of fresh and salt water. When fresh water and salt water come together in an estuary, it's like a meetup of two different crews. But here's the interesting part. They don't always mix and mingle as you'd expect. The fresh river water is kind of the lightweight, less salty type, while the ocean water is heavier and saltier. So they end up just hanging out side by side, keeping their own vibes. This special mingling zone is called an estuary. It's like the sweet spot where the river and ocean have this cool connection. Because they don't totally blend, it creates a unique area where different kinds of fish and critters can thrive. The fresh water brings in some good nutrients, and the salt water adds its own twist. It's basically a water hangout with its own set of rules, and all the marine creatures are totally into it. Green Flash When the sun sets or rises, there's a brief optical phenomenon called a green flash or green ray. It happens just as the sun is about to disappear below the horizon, or right before it comes up. The green color is visible for a very short time, usually no more than a couple of seconds. The reason behind this green appearance is the Earth's atmosphere. As sunlight passes through the layers of the atmosphere during these specific moments, the atmosphere can cause the light to separate into different colors. The green flash occurs when the green light becomes more noticeable. It's a natural occurrence that adds a brief touch of green to the usual colors of sunrise or sunset. Brinicle, or ice stalactite. Imagine you're in the freezing depths of the ocean and suddenly, this icy finger starts reaching down. That's a brinicle. It happens when super cold and heavy salty water, we call it brine, sinks and touches warmer water below. It's like an underwater icicle, and as it reaches down, it freezes everything it touches. It's like Elsa's frosty finger, but happening in the deep sea. So, picture this icy tube coming down, kind of like a freezing elevator. When it hits the ocean floor, it starts spreading its chilly vibes, turning everything into an icy wonderland. Rogue Waves Rogue waves are these unexpectedly big waves that show up way out in the open sea, and they're not playing around. Even big ships and ocean liners need to watch out for them. So, what's the deal with these rogue waves? It's like the ocean is throwing a curveball. When strong winds and currents team up, they can create this one mega wave that stands out from the rest. It's not your average wave. It's like the heavyweight champion of waves, catching everyone off guard. So, when you're cruising the open waters, keep an eye out for these rogue waves. They're nature's way of throwing a surprise party in the middle of the ocean. Maelstrom. A maelstrom is basically a giant whirlpool, like a colossal swirling vortex you wouldn't want to mess with at sea. 
Picture it as nature's intense blender on overdrive. This beast has a super strong downdraft that could vacuum up anything unlucky enough to be nearby in a flash. It's like an aquatic black hole. To break it down, a maelstrom is like a massive water tornado, but way more serious. Its immense pulling power creates this enormous swirling pit in the ocean. If you're too close, it's not a good scene. You might get pulled down into the depths quicker than you can blink. It's like the ocean's ultimate disappearing act, where things vanish in a huge watery swirl. So, when someone mentions a maelstrom, just picture a crazy water dance that sucks up everything in its path, the ocean's way of doing a heavy-duty cleanup. Bioluminance. Ever seen the ocean glow in the dark? That's bioluminescence, and it's like the underwater rave of the animal kingdom. Picture this. Marine creatures, like some cool glow-in-the-dark party animals, have special chemicals in their bodies. When these chemicals get cozy with the oxygen in the air, we get a light show under the sea. So why do these ocean buddies light up? It's like their way of saying, hey, check me out. Some creatures use it to attract mates, others use it to scare off predators, and some just do it for the sheer fun of it. Imagine swimming through the ocean and having fish light up like living lanterns. It's like a magical underwater disco. And the best part? It's not some fancy electric light show. It's all about the glow-in-the-dark marine crew having their own little party beneath the waves. Water Spout a water spout is a column of rotating cloud-filled wind. A water spout descends from a cumulus cloud to an ocean or a lake. Water spouts are similar to tornadoes but are usually smaller and less intense. These twin water spouts developed in the Caribbean Sea near Nassau, Bahamas. But what happens if you go in a water spout? A water spout is a spinning column of air and mist that forms on lakes, rivers, and at sea. Water spouts fall into two categories, fair weather and tornadic. Tornadic water spouts are tornadoes that form over water or move from land to water. Ice disks. Ice disks, also known as ice circles, ice pans, or ice pancakes, are a rare natural phenomenon that occurs in slow-moving water in cold climates. These are thin, circular slabs of ice that rotate slowly on the surface of bodies of water. The occurrence of ice disks is most frequently observed in Scandinavian and North American regions. Notable instances include observations in Wales in December 2008, England in January 2009, North Dakota in December 2013, and Lake Katrina, New York, around January 2014 where an approximately 15 meter, 50 foot diameter ice circle was observed. Additionally, extreme weather conditions in Idaho led to a rare sighting of an ice disk on the Snake River on January 22, 2014. Thanks for diving deep into the craziest and scariest underwater discoveries with us. If you enjoyed the ride, give it a thumbs up, drop a comment on your thoughts, or share your own wild underwater stories and make sure to subscribe for more intriguing content. Your support fuels our underwater exploration. Until next time, dive on and stay curious.